Vitaly Borovy has been working in funeral services for almost 20 years. When Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine began, he was the only worker at six cemeteries of Izum. The man decided for himself not to leave. He says he hoped that the Ukrainian army would quickly repulse the enemy, but after a month and a half of the siege, the city was occupied. Vitaly says that since then he has not had a day off. For days on end, he was busy collecting the bodies and remains of local residents around Izum. He he ran out of coffins in the first weeks. The mortuary did not work because there was no electricity. The city was really littered with corpses. They laid on the pedestrian bridge over the road. They were simply sprinkled with earth, weeds. There were even such that they were simply put a sheet of slate on them so that the dogs would not drag the bodies. A place of pain, grief and sorrow. This is how the site of the mass burial of people who were killed in the city during the Russian occupation is designated in the Izum forest. It is located at the entrance to Izum on the outskirts of one of the city cemeteries. This is the only place where Russian troops allowed burials last spring. In the first days after the deoccupation of Izum, a search group of experts found the bodies of Ukrainian servicemen here, but most of the buried were civilians. Twenty-three bodies of our military were brought to this place, of the guys who were killed defending the city of Izum. We were surprised to understand that not only our military, but also civilians were buried here. Vitaly recalls that in the first days of a full-scale invasion, entire families were getting killed here as a result of the shelling of the city by Russian aircraft. One of the first to die was a family of nine people. An air bomb hit the house with direct fire. There are people. They gathered in a private house from a high-rise building, and everyone was in this house, and just an air bomb hit it. There wasn't even a foundation left. When they were looking for bodies, they found only remains of them. An arm, a leg, something else. They collected everything. These were the first places. Vitaly kept the identification of the bodies in a journal. If the deceased had documents, he wrote their last names, first names, date of birth and death on the cross. If there were no documents, he simply fixed the grave with a number, indicating the approximate age, gender. The last mark in Vitaly's journal is number 455. A lot of people, there are even classmates here. Well, where a person was found, they wrote that place either on Lenin Avenue or just in a city park where an unknown man was found and he was simply covered with soil. The Russian invaders installed military equipment, tanks and cannons right at the cemetery. They had to work under shelling very often, Vitaly says. His team was forced to hide in freshly dug hills to protect themselves from shells and shrapnel many times. Now the cemetery is empty, but Vitaly is still haunted by memories of how people had to be buried at gunpoint. It squeezes you like a spasm. You look, the Russians are standing there, walking, eating and drinking, and there is just this spasm of hatred. What were those people killed for? Ah, but I have these dreams at night. Dreams about bodies very often. After the exhumation of 449 bodies, criminologists found traces of violent death in 50 buried people. These are hands tied behind their backs, ribs around their necks, shot through heads, broken ribs and necks. To date, 232 bodies have been identified. 57 remain unidentified and 58 are having their personal data established, the Kharkiv Regional Prosecutor's Office said. As for the 91 people, the process of conducting forensic molecular genetic examinations is currently underway. The process is complicated by the fact that the remains that were in the ground have putrefactive changes, and from the selected DNA materials it happens that it is impossible to establish the DNA material from them in a few months. So the process is repeated with the selection of new materials. And unfortunately such situations happen that you have to select these DNA materials several times in the bodies that were exhumed, since the material is not always appropriate. The process of identifying the bodies continues. According to the prosecutor's office, the Izum forest remains the site of the largest mass grave of those killed during the Russian occupation in the Kharkiv region. Until now, the city morgues in Kharkiv and the region are overflowing with the bodies of victims of the Russian army. Experts from all regions of Ukraine are working on their identification. Reported by Diana Kolasnik, Natalia Bilokudria, Andriy Domovy, UETV News.